Batic winds, these are constant winds which sweep the mountains and valleys at over 60 miles per hour. Herbies, e, herbies are the even more violent windstorms during which wind can gust to 100 miles per hour. Okay, well done with that, Alexandra. Thank you so much. And uh, let's go to Emmett for the next one. Okay. Well, not uh, white nights, days and nights of constant, uh, days and nights of constant light are experienced around the summer solstice, December 21st. The opposite is true during the days of the winter solstice, June 21st. Then the land is entirely dark throughout the day and night. But what does this mean for human temperatures? Alongside the extreme cold temperatures which can cause frostbite and hypothermia, nothing edible grows outdoors here. The largest native land animal, the penguin, is considered an ocean animal. It's a half inch long, windless midge. The dark night can cause severe depression or uh, SAD, seasonal affective disorder. The high altitude of the continent causes altitude sickness and sun, uh, sunlight bouncing off the ice. At snow can cause severe sunburn and snow blindness. I understand more that people would have found adaptation to this environment difficult. Thank you, Emmett, for that. And let's just go to Miser for the last one. Is it hampers, uh, hamper cap? Hamper cap yes. Yeah. Life in Antarctica is so harsh that. All those preparing to live on the continent for any length of time must take part in a survival school. This is called the Happy Camper School, but deals with some serious stuff. The students are taught how to survive in the extreme weather conditions, how to keep hydrated, build an emergency shelter, and avoid the natural dangers of the continent, including crevices. Good. My turn. I've got a question for you. Yeah. You know this particular article yeah. is on living on the ice and is talking about Antarctica. Where is Antarctica? It's um it's uh it's like have a guess, it's no problem. I can't really explain it. Okay. No problem at all. And uh, Mousseline, you were coming on. What were you going to say? Okay. Uh, Elena? Let's go to Elena quickly. I, um, I, I, I thought I was right but I don't think I am that's why I lowered my hand well you haven't even given me the answer yet so <laughs> yeah because, um, well I was gonna say I was gonna say I think it's at the bottom of the southern hemisphere but bottom of the southern hemisphere whereabouts in the bottom of the southern hemisphere like if you were to look at it on the world map it's at the very yeah. bottom um so what's that very bottom actually called? Is there another name for it? Um, so sure. is it near? So is it near like uh, Africa or yeah. Australia? Yeah. Yeah, it's near Africa. Okay, good. Well, you're close. You're close. You're getting there. Let's try one more person. Let's go to um, Farhana. Open question for anybody who wants to answer. Hi, Farhana. Hello. Hi there. What do you think? 
Where is uh, Antarctica? I think it'd be in the extreme, close to the bottom of the world. Yeah, so near Australia. But you're getting close as well. Getting close. So I'm just looking for this one specific answer. Let's go to the site. Uh, is it near like there? Hi there, can you hear me okay? Go ahead. Uh, I think it would be like near. Um, would it be near like. Oh, I don't know. Sorry, you have to have a guess, there's no problem. Uh, like, roughly, it'd be like in a way, right in a way near the center. So it'd be like near probably South Africa and uh, Australia slash New Zealand. Really. Yeah, you're, you're close again, I'm saying. You're close again. Just uh, listen up. Let's go to Meta. Hi, Meta. Hello. Go ahead. Um. Isn't it like like Brazil and then near the Antarctic Sea? Well, now you've gone to Brazil. So we've gone from Australia to South Africa to Brazil. So Brazil is South America. So like South, South America as well. So you're also very close as well, Meda. And then it so none, of, not, none of you are wrong. But you're very close. So let's go to Emmett for the, hopefully for the final answer. Uh, it's the South Pole. It's the South Pole. Yeah, of course. So you have the North Pole, which is the Arctic, and then you have the South Pole, which is the Antarctica. So you know, well done for that, Emmett. Um, when I was younger, I used to always get confused. I I, I didn't I couldn't work out. Which one was the Arctic and which one was the Antarctica? So just remember, you know the word with the longer name, Antarctica, is actually the South Pole. All right, so Antarctica is the South Pole. So in the North Pole, which is the north of the planet, you find lots of polar bears. In the South Pole, you find penguins and other creatures as well. But lucky we don't have them two together because can you imagine if there were penguins and polar bears together? You know, it'd be so easy to catch the, the penguins to eat them. So luckily the polar bears are up north and the penguins are down south. Okay, so um, I'm just going to review this text one more time so we get a really good idea of what this is about. So when you hear the word Antarctica, you probably think of ice and snow because it is the case. It's in South Pole, freezing cold temperatures and penguins. But well, for 1,000 to 5,000 people annually, Antarctica uh, is our seventh continent and is kind of home. So Antarctica is a massive place, huge. Remember, the Arctic, which is the North Pole, is mostly ice that's frozen up. And the scientists are saying that because of global warming, that ice is slowly melting and turning into, obviously, sea the sea, the water. So when the ice melts, the sea level rises. All right, whereas Antarctica is a huge place and it's taking up about 4.5 million square miles. And I'm talking about actual land, land mass, not just ice frozen up, but actual land. And you have the ice on top of the land. It's classified, it's known as a continent because it's actually a proper landmass, unlike Arctic, which, which I mentioned before, is made up of sea ice. But it wasn't really explored much at all um, until recently, because the rough seas in the South Pole and the fact that the South Pole, the Ar Antarctica, is actually very far away compared to the North Pole. Because remember, in the North Pole, in the Arctic, you have Canada, you have Greenland, you have Iceland, you have the Siberian regions of Russia, and they're not actually too far from the North Pole. Whereas in the South Pole, 
it's not connected in any way. So in the Antarctica, Australia, Brazil, South Africa, three of the answers that we had from you are actually not far, but they're still quite far because there's a big mass of sea in between. And those seas could be very, very dangerous to sail on because it's very stormy conditions. So it hasn't really been explored as much as the North Pole because North Pole, obviously Europe, America, Russia, all these countries are not far off and you can actually um, travel quite easily up to the North Pole, whereas the South Pole is just so far away. I like the Arctic, which has been populated by nomadic tribes and hunters for thousands of years. So in other words, the North Pole has had populations living there for a long time. Antarctica was not even noticed by uh, people voyaging through the sea until the 1820s. And it had no human inhabitants at all until the 1950s. So only about 70 years ago, we had uh, humans actually inhabiting the place. The reason for the lack of human habitation was the case that scientists who lived there called Antarctica the ice since on average the ice that covers the land was about a meter and a half miles thick. So one and a half miles thick, which is just the ice on top of the land. Although the ice over the land is freshwater ice, sea ice also actually builds up around the continent in winter, causing it to almost double in size. So you have this uh, area of land called the Antarctica, which is a South Pole, which is big enough already, it's huge, but then it actually doubles in size because the sea ice melts around it, sorry, uh, freezes around it, causing that extra land mass. And the average temperature there is minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is roughly around about minus 51 centigrade, degrees centigrade. In comparison to zero, or minus 17 degrees centigrade in the Arctic. So can you see the uh, disparity between the two temperatures? So in the South Pole, Antarctica, the average is around about minus 51 degrees centigrade, minus 51, goodness me. Whereas in the North Pole, in the Arctic, the average temperature is between zero and minus 17. So it just shows you that the Antarctica, which is the South Pole, is three times, more than three times colder than the North Pole. So again, another reason why humans haven't really been to the North South Pole as much. The cold, dense air of Antarctica causes cabatic winds. These are constant winds which sweep the mountains and valleys at over 60 miles per hour. So it just shows you that in the Antarctica, you know, some of those winds are, are quite strong, well, very strong in, case, in this case. And some of the windstorms can be over 100 miles per hour. I mean, if you had 100 miles per hour winds in the UK, you can imagine how much damage that will actually cause to infrastructure and houses and people. Um, so what does it actually mean for humans to live there? Well, Alongside the cold temperatures, extreme cold temperatures, they can actually cause frostbite very, very easily. So if you're in minus 50 plus uh, degrees centigrade, you will most likely catch frostbite, which is the fact that your fingers and parts of your nose and your face will actually ice up. And once they freeze, it's very difficult to reverse that process. You can't just put your hand in boiling water or lukewarm water and expect it to melt. No, because once you get frostbite, your blood freezes up inside your fingers and you can actually snap your finger off because it's ice. You know, when something is ice and it's uh, something that's long, maybe you can snap it off. It's just, just like an icicle, for example. That's exactly what could happen. And once your blood freezes, you can't expect your blood to melt and go back to normal. It doesn't happen like that, which means that you could be disabled, you know, for life in those particular areas of your fingers or hands or maybe your nose, etc. So frostbite is is very dangerous, and also hypothermia. Hypothermia that your body goes from hot to cold very very quickly, and when it goes from hot to cold very very quickly. 
that's actually very, very dangerous for your body as well. Because once that happens, then you can't always reverse that process. Okay? So that's one of the causes. So, um, the largest native land animal, the penguin is considered an ocean animal. It's a half inch long wingless midge. The dark nights can cause severe depression. And also the high altitude of the continent causes altitude sickness as well. So because you're quite high up, because of all that melting ice, which kind of goes up, that can cause sickness as well. Those preparing to live on the continent for any length of time must take part in a survival school. So before you I just got disconnected. My apologies.